Hey there, I'm Daisy Parker, a 28-year-old animator at DreamWorks, living my dream life in the city. But let me tell you, getting here wasn't a stroll in the park. Growing up, my family never really understood my passion for art. I'd spend hours sketching characters, completely lost in my own world, but my parents just saw it as a waste of time. Daisy, honey, why don't you help out at the store instead of doodling? That was my mom's go-to line. And my dad. He'd just grunt and shake his head in disapproval. But I didn't let that stop me. I worked my butt off, got into art school, and now, here I am, living in a cozy downtown apartment surrounded by friends who actually get me. Waking up every day excited to head to a job that makes me come alive is truly a dream come true. Speaking of family though, well, they're still, them. My older brother, Kevin, is the golden child, of course. My younger sister, Grace, is still figuring things out, and my parents, Peter and Nancy, are stuck in their old school ways. Just last weekend, we had a big family dinner, and Kevin drops this bombshell. I'm moving to New York. Got a big opportunity there. Everyone starts fawning over him like he's some kind of superstar. Then, with a smug grin, he turns to me and says, Hey Daisy, since I'm leaving, why don't you quit your little drawing job and take over the family store? I nearly choked on my pasta. Excuse me? I asked. Yeah, come on, sis. The store's struggling. We need someone to run it full time, he replied. Before I could even respond, my mom jumped in, that's a wonderful idea, Kevin. She turned to me and gushed, Daisy, honey, this is your chance to do something meaningful. Asterisk meaningful asterisk. I sputtered. I'm creating art that reaches millions. My dad scoffed, art. You mean those cartoon things? This is real work, Daisy. I couldn't believe it. I'm not quitting my job to run a failing convenience store. Kevin shot me a look. Don't be selfish, Daisy. Think about the family for once. That was the breaking point. Asterisk selfish asterisk. I've worked my ass off to get where I am. None of you supported me, and now you want me to throw it all away. I snapped. My mom gasped, language, young lady. Grace just rolled her eyes and muttered, stop being so dramatic. I stood up so fast that my chair screeched against the floor. You know what? I'm done. Call me when you actually care about my life. I stormed out and slammed the door behind me, tears stinging my eyes. How could they still not see me? still not understand me. As I drove home, a realization hit me, maybe it was time to stop seeking their approval altogether. The next day at work, I couldn't focus. My mind kept replaying last night's disaster. My best friend and desk neighbor, Zoe, noticed right away. Spill it, Daisy. What's with the zombie look, she asked. I sighed. My family's at it again. They want me to quit and run the family store. What? That's insane, Zoe said, her eyes wide. Tell me you said no. Of course, I did. But. I don't know. Maybe I should help out a little. Zoe grabbed my shoulders. Daisy, no. Stand your ground. This job is your dream. Don't let them guilt you into giving it up. But guilt, it's a powerful thing. Before I knew it, I was spending my weekends at the store. And let me tell you, it was a disaster. Mom, these numbers don't add up, I said, frowning at the ledger. She waved me off. Oh, don't worry about that. Your father handles the finances. But dad was just as clueless. It's probably just a mistake in the system, he mumbled. I dug deeper and found a stack of overdue bills. Guys, we're in serious debt here. They exchanged worried looks. 
We'll figure it out, Dad said under his breath. One day, while restocking shelves, I overheard Kevin on the phone. Yeah, it's all set up. Once I'm in New York, we'll make it happen. Don't worry about my family, they won't suspect a thing. What was he planning? Between the stress of the store and my demanding job, I was already burning out fast. My latest project at work was suffering, and my boss took notice. Daisy, this isn't up to your usual standard. Is everything okay? she asked, her expression serious. I forced a smile. Yeah, just a bit tired. I'll fix it, I promise. Even Daniel, my boyfriend, was starting to lose patience. Babe, we barely see each other anymore, he complained one night. I know, I'm sorry. It's just, family stuff, I explained. He rolled his eyes. It's always family stuff with you. I felt like I was drowning, trying to balance everything and still coming up short. But then came the night that changed everything. I'd been trying to reach Daniel all day, but he wasn't responding. Worry gnawed at me, so I decided to surprise him at his place. Using my spare key, I let myself in and called out, Daniel, you home. That's when I heard it, giggling coming from the bedroom. My heart pounded as I slowly pushed the door open, and there they were, Daniel and Grace, my sister, tangled up together. They scrambled to cover themselves, but the damage was done. Daisy, it's not what it looks like, Daniel stammered, while Grace just turned away, unable to meet my eyes. It felt like a punch to the gut. My boyfriend and my sister, the two people I thought I could trust most. How long? I managed to choke out, my voice barely a whisper. Daisy, please, Grace started, her voice trembling. How long? I screamed, my voice breaking. Daniel hung his head. A few months. I stumbled back, my world spinning. Without another word, I turned and ran, ran from the betrayal, the lies, and everything I thought I knew. Tears blurred my vision as I drove home, one thought echoing in my mind, who can I trust now? After that night, I threw myself into work at the store, thinking if I stayed busy, I wouldn't have to think about Daniel or Grace. But the more I dug into the store's finances, the more inconsistencies I found. Something was seriously wrong. Zoe, I need your help, I said one day at lunch. Something's off with my family's store and I think it's connected to Kevin's big opportunity in New York. Bless her, Zoe didn't even hesitate. I'm in. What do you need? We spent weeks digging, using every spare moment, late nights, weekends, you name it. And what we uncovered made me sick to my stomach. Kevin's been embezzling money for years, I told Zoe, staring at the evidence on my laptop. He's been siphoning off profits, faking inventory losses. No wonder the store's been struggling. I knew I had to confront my parents, but I wasn't prepared for what came next. Mom, Dad, I need to show you something, I said, laying out the documents on the kitchen table. What's all this? Dad frowned, his eyes scanning the papers. I took a deep breath. Kevin's been stealing from the store. Look, here are the transfers, the fake inventory records. Stop it, Daisy. Mom cut me off, her voice cold. How dare you accuse your brother of something like this? I'm not accusing, I have proof. I insisted. But Dad slammed his hand on the table. Enough. You've always been jealous of Kevin's success. This is a new low, even for you. Before I could say another word, the front door opened, and in walked Kevin, looking as smug as ever. Hey, family, guess who's back? He walked in, exuding all his usual charm and arrogance. Mom rushed over to hug him tightly. Kevin. What happened to New York, she asked. He shrugged casually. Didn't work out, but no worries, 
I've got new plans for the store. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. New plans. You mean more ways to steal from us? Kevin's eyes narrowed as he glanced at the documents I held. What are you talking about? I know what you've been doing, embezzling, faking inventory reports, I said, my voice firm. He chuckled, but I saw a flicker of panic in his eyes. She's lost it, he laughed, turning to our parents. You don't believe this, right? To my horror, they immediately sided with him. Of course we don't, honey, mom said, pulling him closer. Daisy's always been dramatic. A huge argument erupted, everyone yelling over each other, voices overlapping, accusations flying. I stood there in disbelief, watching my family unravel right before my eyes. For the first time, I wondered if I even belonged in this family anymore. You ungrateful brat. Dad roared, his face flushed with anger. After everything we've done for you. Mom was crying, and Kevin played the victim perfectly, shaking his head in disbelief. I can't believe you'd make up such lies, Daisy. You need help. I stormed out, feeling more alone than ever. The next day, my boss called me into her office. Daisy, your work has been slipping. If this continues, we'll have to reconsider your position here. I nodded numbly. I understand. It won't happen again. That night, I went back to the store, hoping to clear my head. That's when I overheard Kevin on the phone. Yeah, the sale's almost finalized. Once the store's gone, we'll split the money, and no one will be the wiser. He was planning to sell the store behind everyone's back. I sat in my car for hours, weighing my options. My family wouldn't believe me, my job was on the line, and Kevin was about to destroy everything. Finally, I made a decision, I couldn't let Kevin win. I couldn't let my parents lose everything, and I couldn't give up the career I had worked so hard for. It was time to stop playing nice. It was time to expose the truth, no matter the cost. The next morning, I called my parents. I'm done helping at the store. I need to focus on my work. Dad scoffed. Typical. Always thinking of yourself. I bit my tongue and hung up. Then I made an anonymous call to the IRS. At work, I threw myself into my animation project, long nights, endless cups of coffee. But it was worth it. When I finally presented it, the room erupted in applause. My boss pulled me aside, beaming. Daisy, this is incredible. We're promoting you to lead animator on our next big project. I was on cloud nine, until my phone buzzed with a news alert local business owner arrested for tax evasion and fraud. My stomach dropped. It was happening. I rushed to the store, where I found my parents in shock as IRS agents combed through everything. What's going on? Mom cried. An agent approached us. Ma'am, your store is being seized due to years of financial misconduct. Dad turned to me, his face ashen. Daisy, you were right. How could we have been so blind? I felt a mix of vindication and sadness. I tried to tell you. Just then, Grace burst in, her mascara streaked with tears. I'm so sorry, Daisy. Daniel, he cheated on me too, with my best friend. I couldn't help but laugh bitterly. Karma's a bitch, isn't it? The next few weeks were chaos. Kevin was facing serious jail time, the store was gone, and my parents were drowning in debt. Daisy, honey, mom pleaded over the phone one night. We need help. Could you lend us some money? I took a deep breath. No, mom. I can't. But we're family, she said, her voice breaking. Family. I scoffed. You haven't acted like family in years. I'm done. 
I hung up, hands shaking but feeling lighter than I had in a long time. A month later, I got an offer from a top animation studio in New York. I didn't hesitate. As I packed up my L.A. apartment, Zoe helped, tears in her eyes. I'm going to miss you, girl. But I'm so proud of you, she said. I hugged her tight. I couldn't have done this without you. Six months later, I was thriving. My new project was gaining buzz, I had an amazing group of friends, and for the first time in forever, I felt truly happy. One sunny Saturday, as I sketched in Central Park, my phone rang. Mom's name flashed on the screen. I stared at it, memories flooding back, the arguments, the betrayals, the years of feeling like I was never good enough. I looked up at the bustling city around me, at the life I had built for myself. I declined the call and went back to my sketch. A sense of peace washed over me. I was finally free, free from expectations, free from toxic relationships, and free to be me. And you know what? It felt good.